That the sun will eventually destroy all life on Earth is certain. Over the past four billion years, the amount of solar radiation reaching our planet has increased by about a third. Meanwhile, the sun has used up about half the hydrogen fuel in its core, fusing it to form helium, and burns through another four million metric tons of it every second. The sun will carry on getting brighter at the same time growing in size and gradually raising the average temperature of our planet. A billion years from now, Earth will have warmed up to the point where the oceans start to evaporate and water vapor in the atmosphere leaks away into space. This process will accelerate until after another two billion years, the blue planet will be blue no longer. All the water will have gone leaving behind a desiccated world on which if life still exists it will be in underground refuges where traces of moisture remain. Around 5 billion AD the Sun will run out of hydrogen in its core, although hydrogen to helium fusion will continue in a shell around the core. With no radiation pouring out from the center, gravity will squeeze the core, raising the temperature and density until they're high enough to allow helium to start fusing into carbon and oxygen. At the same time as the core is compressed, the outer layers of the sun will swell up, boosting the solar radius by 40% and doubling the luminosity. A billion and a half years later, the sun will be triple the size it is now with a surface that glows not yellow, but orange. Earth will be 100 degrees hotter and home to nothing except possibly some dregs of extreme heat-loving life forms. A quarter of a billion years later still, the sun will balloon out to become a red giant, about 200 times its present diameter, so that it will engulf Mercury and Venus. Seen from the lava seas of the then lifeless molten Earth, it will take up almost half the sky. Earth may even be entirely consumed or vaporized, returning the material out of which we and it are made to interstellar space. Much depends on the details of solar evolution in these late stages. As a red giant, the Sun will lose some of its mass, perhaps up to a third, in the form of a far more vigorous solar wind than what it exhibits today. Despite being bigger, the Sun will have a smaller gravitational pull, so that the orbits of the remaining planets, possibly including Earth, will move outward. Set against this effect will be increased tidal interactions, which could tend to make Earth spiral into the bloated Sun. In any event, it'll be academic as far as terrestrial life is concerned. By that time, assuming humans or their successors still exist, they'll presumably have the means to escape destruction either by relocating within the solar system or migrating to an entirely new star in a more benign phase of its evolution. In time, helium fusion will stop inside the solar core but will continue in a shell, itself surrounded by a second hydrogen burning shell. The Sun will then be even more luminous and unstable, losing matter and varying in brightness. Finally, all nuclear reactions will cease in the Sun and its outer layers will escape into space to form a so-called planetary nebula, several light years across. Over thousands of years, this nebula will further expand and fade, leaving behind the Sun's dead core, now exposed as a hot, dense ball of degenerate matter smaller than Earth, a white dwarf.